What's shaking, booktube? My name's Cam. Welcome back to another video. Today might be a bit of a blast from the past for you because it directly relates to some big bookish controversy that happened quite a number of years ago. And normally I'm all for leaving people's crazy attitudes in the past and not dragging them up later on for no reason. But in this case, it's directly linked to something that's happening now. Today we are talking about the infamous Goodreads stalker Kathleen Hale. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. I'm rocking my pants. Put suckers in fear. Hell, yes. Kathleen has a new book coming out in early June this year called Kathleen Hale is a Crazy Stalker. Isn't that just so quirky? That's so quirky. Man, that, that is quirky. quirky. That is just so damn quirky, Kathleen. The title of the book alone is kind of like a Kathleen is a crazy stalker. Like she's poking fun at the fact that people are saying that about her. And I imagine the reason that that's the title of this book is because that is the largest amount of infamy or fame that has surrounded her name probably in a whole life. That past controversy is being used as a sales tool for this new book, which is a collection of six essays, one of which is an essay on her actual incident of stalking, something that she has repeatedly referred to as light stalking. Now I don't do cancel culture, I just, I just don't do that. But what I do want to do today is make sure I give you a brief refresher course in the history of Kathleen Hale and her light stalking so that you are at least aware of what happened before you make the decision to buy the book or not. Ultimately, no one got seriously physically hurt, but a lot of the stuff that happened just shouldn't have. It shouldn't have, and it's not something that I think should be talked about as if it's some quirky, fun incident that happened in the past, and it's like, oh my god, she's so crazy. Like, no, she, she stalked someone. Like, actually stalked someone. Anyway, I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm going to be referring to a number of sources, one of which being the Guardian article. This is kind of what sparked everything. Had this Guardian article not come out, I'm not sure the Kathleen Hale controversy would have turned into what it was. Headline reading, Am I being catfished? An author confronts her number one online critic. It's a pretty fun title, pretty fun headline. It's like, oh, wow, that, that's someone confronting a hater. That sounds interesting. That doesn't raise any red flags per se. So this was an article written by, oh well, Kathleen Hale. It's an article written about Kathleen Hale by Kathleen Hale. So I'm sure there's not going to be any bias there. I'm not going to read the whole article because it is seriously long. Like it is, I think it's been referred to as an essay. Honestly, I think it's more appropriately a short story inadvertently confessing to an actual crime, but... We'll look at the highlights. And of course, if you want to read the whole thing for context rather than just go off of what I'm saying, I'm going to leave the link in the description below, and I would highly recommend it. It's an interesting read, but perhaps not for the reasons that Kathleen intended. And towards the end of the video, we'll take a look at the new book coming out, the reason I'm making this actual video, and we'll have a quick chat about that as well. But it is important to have the context first, so we'll go through what happened. So it starts off with, uh, you know, pretty standard talking about uh, being nervous for the release of your book as a debut author. We skip ahead to where it all kicks off. Basically, Kathleen Hale had a bunch of books sent out, uh, advanced reader copies for people to read and review to build some hype for the book. That's a publishing standard. That's just what happens. Book was published through HarperCollins Teen, and there's some interesting information on that that we'll get to a bit later as well about how the publishing of the book came to be. But essentially, Kathleen received a review from someone on Goodreads, and it kind of ticked her off. Now, I haven't been able to find a copy of the full review, and Kathleen has included in this article a bit of a summary in quotation marks, so generally that would mean that it is written down verbatim, but I'm gonna read that out and we'll see what happens. So the review starts with, fuck this, it said. I think this book is awfully written and offensive. Its execution in regards to all aspects is horrible and honestly, non-existent. Blythe went on to warn other readers that my characters were rape apologists and slut shamers. She accused my book of mocking everything from domestic abuse to PTSD. I can say with utmost certainty that this is one of the worst books that I've read this year, she said. Maybe my life. And then from there it caused kind of, kind of an avalanche of people agreeing and people posting similar reviews, people changing some of the reviews they had that had been glowing reviews, to not so positive reviews based on what had been said in that comment, in that review. Now, this is a bit where probably the only part in the whole video where 
I'm going to kind of empathize with Kathleen Hale, maybe even agree with her a little bit. I think, I think bullying on Goodreads is a thing, and I think it's something that's brushed off way too much because the bullying is done by reviewers, and it's brushed off on the precedent of it's their review, it's their opinion, they can, they can say what they want, it's just a review. But there is a very distinctive difference between posting a review that may have some constructive criticism, but is still inappropriately and unnecessarily pointed and barbed, and a good review, which may not be a positive one, but includes a lot of constructive criticism in a professional and articulated manner. Starting a book review with fuck this, and then going on to say that it's offensive and horrible and it's, uh, you know, rape apologist and all this stuff without giving specific examples, I think is a crappy way to frame a review. And look, that's not me saying they don't have the freedom to do that. Not everyone is going to be great at doing reviews, and that's fine. When I've seen arguments against Kathleen Hale in the past, they've spoken about this review as if it was just some constructive criticism. It was just honest feedback, and Kathleen didn't like it because it was critical. And don't get me wrong, I think Kathleen Hale has more than proved, obviously, at this point, that she cannot handle uh, negative criticism, constructive or otherwise. But specifically talking about the review itself, I think it was unnecessarily barbed. That's all. That's all I'm saying. That being said, no matter how harsh this review was, it in no way, in no way, any way, shape or form, justifies what's to come. I haven't read Kathleen Hale's book. I can't say if it does or doesn't, um, you know, glorifies uh, rape and domestic violence, that kind of, that kind of stuff. I can't say that. But I have been witness to instances in the past where authors have been accused of having this problematic content when really it's just challenging or sharp content that is necessary for the story. I've made, uh, you know, videos on it before. I made a video on the topic of stuff being problematic. And in that video, I discussed how I think uh, themes in books that challenge people or make them question morality or makes them uncomfortable, they tend to label that as pl problematic. And maybe that happened with Kathleen Hale's book. I don't know. Maybe she did actually write a story that romanticizes domestic abuse. I don't know. That's not something I'm going to comment on, but the review itself, yes, I think the review was a bit too sharp. So from here on, this is where the red flags start popping up and all sympathy for Kathleen Hale kind of fucks off out the door. In her own words, she describes a situation where she starts obsessing about the review and she starts trying to locate the person online or some information about them online. She starts going into forums where they might have mentioned this Goodreads reviewer. She speaks to people that other authors that this Goodreads reviewer has reviewed in the past negatively. In the article, she literally described what is the beginning of an unhealthy obsession. Reading just this far in the article, I one of the first things that came to my head was, wow, this is someone who probably shouldn't have gone into the creative field. Getting negative and even aggressive feedback on your creative content is an inevitability, especially when you become a bigger name, which is obviously something that you were hoping would happen. And if this is your general response to getting, you know, negative or even aggressive uh, feedback, then I would hope that you or at least someone close to you would be smart enough to say, hey, maybe you should, uh, maybe this isn't the best idea. I'm all for everyone following their dreams, but if the circumstances around the dream of yours result in you having an unhealthy habit that could impact other people, it could impact the rest of your life if you tend to obsess this much about a negative review, maybe it's just not the thing for you. You cannot be a creative individual and get that worked up about negative reviews. You just can't. Anyway, like I said, she goes on to obsess about this person. She also kind of, it's kind of a weird theme in this article that she keeps mentioning at any instance she can that she's perusing these negative reviews on on Twitter. It becomes a big thing at this point in the article that she's re reading these reviews on Twitter. But it becomes a thing that she's always doing it with a drink in her hand. And I, I don't know if that's like, this is kind of separate to the whole actual story, but I don't know if that's like some kind of writing device to, to try and make uh, what you're doing sound more interesting or quirky. But I know it's just weird. She, she mentions a lot in this article that she was drinking or drunk when a lot of this stuff happened. It's just, I know, it's a weird thing I wanted to point out. So here's the bit where another red flag pops up and a slightly taller red flag of that. I'm going to read it out and keep in mind this is in the context of uh, perusing more of this Blythe person who left her the review 
on Twitter. So instead, I ate a lot of candy and engaged in light stalking. Keep light stalking in mind while I finish reading this little bit here. I prowled Blythe's Instagram and Twitter. I read her reviews, considered photos of her baked goods, and watched from a distance as she got on her soapbox, at one point bragging that she was the only person she knew who used her real name and profession online. Light stalking? I mean, that doesn't feel so light. It kind of feels like you literally went onto every social media or public platform that this person has and went through all their shit. That's... Sure, we'll, we'll give you the benefit of the doubt. We'll say that is light stalking, although light stalking to me is kind of like going onto your ex's Instagram and making sure that they don't have a new boyfriend yet. That's light stalking, I think. I, I don't think going through literally all of their social platforms and reading all of their reviews and et cetera, et cetera, I, I, kind of feels like stalking. I reminded myself that there are worse things than rabid bloggers, like stalking. <laughs> Cancer, for instance, and that people suffer from greater degradations than becoming writers, but still I wanted to respond. Fuck, Kathleen, it wasn't that bad. This Blythe person didn't cut you off at the ankles, they left you a negative review. That's all. So as it goes on, uh, basically there's some back and forth between Kathleen and people online on Twitter, and basically everyone close to Kathleen is saying, stop. Please stop. You'll ruin your career. She also goes on to use a bunch of language when referring to Blythe that kind of downplays her entirely. Like heckle. She she refers to her as a heckler. Hecklers and people who leave you negative book reviews, not the same thing. Negative book reviews are quite directly providing you feedback on a piece of creative content that you have put out into the world. Hecklers, on the other hand, are generally people that just want to cause a disruption for the sake of causing a disruption. There's also a weird line where she goes, Why do hecklers heckle? Recent studies have had dark things to say about abusive internet commenters. Commenters, A University of Manitoba report suggested that they share traits with child molesters and serial killers. Serial Killers is the third album by Scarsdale. New York-based power pop band Too Much Toy. Stop. Jesus. There's just a whole part in the article where she tries to talk about the psychology of leaving a negative book review and all this kind of crap like that, and she just makes it so much more than it is. It's just not that deep. And the more you read, the more you find out about her obsessive compulsion with criticism and feedback and just this general air of, like, complete self-absorption. Like, anyone who has something bad to say about her must be psychologically damaged or must have something wrong with them. I mean, it's not something she says outright, but it's something that she alludes to with lines like that part about the child molesters and serial killers, which... Why why would you think that's a good idea to include that in this article? In no world, in no universe, is that a comparable offence with what you have suffered? And yeah, she just goes on to refer to this uh, Blythe review as heckling and trolling and basically downplaying it as stuff that can be disregarded entirely. Negative reviews are nothing more than heckling and trolling. Why should they be considered when evaluating the worth of what she wrote? And look, I'm sure there probably were some trolls in, involved in that whole controversy when it happened. But for the most part, she's kind of referring to the Blythe review as what sparked it. The leader, the brave heart of the trolls, so to speak. She goes on more to talk more about... Um, being drunk on all these different types of alcohol, about some anxiety she was dealing with uh, in this whole instance. And, and look, I get that. I get that being bombarded with negative reviews and criticism, it sucks. It, it stings, sure. But again, it just doesn't justify what's to come. So then this person, uh, I'm just going to keep referring to them as Blythe, made a tweet not directed at Kathleen Hale at all, just completely unrelated to that whole situation about a book they were writing or a book they were aspiring to release, and Kathleen basically subtweeted that and made some snarky remark, which is something I'm sure a lot of authors have been tempted to do, but no one really does that because that's fucking stupid. Absolute stupid idea, and being that this was a tweet that really had nothing to do with you, it kind of just shows more that you were continuing to obsess about this and continuing to lightly stalk her social media. So then it kind of exploded to an even higher level and she started getting even more criticism. A lot of the people that were defending her turned on her, etc., saying stuff like, 
reviews are for readers, not authors. That's a sentiment I disagree with, to be honest, but I've done a whole video on that already. I'll leave a card. This is the point in the article, and mind you, this is only about halfway through the article, where the tone of the article changes. The tone goes from being this poor defenseless author that had been wrongly uh, crucified to the author kind of getting on her feet and realizing that this was all a conspiracy. You heard me right. It turns into a bit of a detective novel from here. Because during her light story... I don't, I don't even want to keep doing that. I'm just... You know what? I'm going to call it what it is. During her casual daily stalking of this black person, she realized that a lot of the stuff on their social media indicated that they were not who they say they are. Yep, you heard me right. She stumbled across the first person on the internet to ever want some anonymity. It just kind of gets weird from here. I mean, she realizes that... And I mean, it does sound like this black person was using a fake name and like pictures of someone else and all this kind of stuff like that. But the way she talks about it is just weird. Like the tone of this part of the story is literally like the whole thing has been a conspiracy. It's been a coordinated attack on her from the start. When in reality, it, it's not that deep. It's probably just this person didn't want to be writing such uh, sharp reviews about people and having them have the ability to track down who they are, which is exactly what Kathleen Hale tried to do. So I guess they were right in wanting some anonymity. And mind you, at this point, this is quite a long time after that review was done, and still Kathleen Hale confesses that she's still perusing Blythe's social medias almost daily. That is not the behavior of someone who should be encouraged into a creative field where they are going to receive uh, feedback, referring to the fact that she now has a new book, especially based on this exact controversy. I don't understand how that is being encouraged. Jumping ahead again, we'll get to that. <laughs> I'm so sorry for how long this video is, but there is quite a lot. So then this book club offers to do an interview with Kathleen Hale, and they ask her if she would want a reviewer to conduct the interview, and she asks for Blythe, obviously. And going forward from there, and this is something that absolutely should not have happened, and this is Pretty much the first major red flag where it becomes somewhat dangerous. The book club told her that they can do giveaways, and Kathleen asked for the address of Blythe. Yikes! That's gonna be a fucking yikes for me, holy shit! So then Kathleen put the address into Google and did a Google satellite search of the house. Ah! She literally... Google searches this person's house and compares it against their Instagram photos through some sleuthing realizes that they can't be who they say they are because the photos look different. The attitude towards this person using information that isn't their own is basically that anything negative they've ever had to say about Kathleen Hale and her actual writing can now be discredited, and discredited entirely because they aren't who they say they are. And she keeps referring to it as catfishing. It's not catfishing. Even with the new book coming out, she still refers to it as cat- It's not catfishing, Kathleen. It's not. You c <sighs> You know what catfishing is to most people? It is someone creating a fake identity for the specific purpose of deceiving someone a means to an end. This black person using a fake identity has literally nothing to do with the negative feedback she gave you. Those are unrelated topics. It's not catfishing. It is not. Them providing you negative feedback gave you absolutely no right to try and uncover who they really are, and then write about it in an article. So then Kathleen's friend, who sounds like a fucking genius, tells her to rent a car and go see this person. Oh no! But that's okay, because it's light stalking. It's just light. It's... It's just fun. It's just a fun and quacky stalking. I, look, I don't want to overanalyze this article. I've been going through it a bit too scrupulously. So I'm going to dot point what happens from here so we can really get to the meat of this video that I'm making today. Basically, Kathleen waits a bit longer, gets drunk a ton more times, actually rents a car, speaks to someone who is a producer of the TV show Catfish, even though this isn't catfishing. You know, I think her use of the word catfish in this is just another way for her to discredit this person and anything negative they've ever had to say about Kathleen. I think that's why she keeps clinging to the term catfish so desperately. But yeah, she literally goes to this person's house without their permission. Can you imagine? You leave a review on someone's book, right? 
and it's it's a pretty aggressive review sure but you felt that you left some constructive criticism in there and you feel that you made some points whatever it was a negative review that's what's important and then that author shows up on your doorstep in any situation can you imagine that being an instance where you would be comfortable or okay with that no that is not okay that is something that absolutely should not have happened there is no if if ands or buts about it just no 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 it's not something that should be reflected on as quirky or something silly that this Kathleen person did. Oh, Kathleen Hale is such a crazy stalker. Like, no, that's, that's fucked. That is not okay. And I'm pretty sure that constitutes genuine stalking as an actual crime. So in the article, she goes on to say that she went up to the door. She, in the article, literally describes what she saw in the backseat of this person's car for whatever reason. I don't know, maybe to really add some juice to this stalking story. I don't know. Ultimately, they didn't even meet. Kathleen just left a book on the person's doorstep called A Short Guide to a Happy Life as some kind of passive-aggressive gift or something. Although genuinely there is nothing passive-aggressive about going through someone's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, requesting their physical address from a book club which is confidential information and was used, was given to you entirely for the purpose of sending them a copy of your book and that's all. That's the premise the address was provided under. Going on to hunt down all of their reviews online, going on to Google image their house. But if all that's not even bad enough, that's not where the story ends. Kathleen Hale calls up this, uh, well, the person she believes to be Blythe and poses as a fact checker so that she can ask for some extremely personal details from this person. But it's okay because it's all part of her, uh, you know, her fun little detective investigation. So that's fine. She asks this person how to spell their name, where they live, just a bunch of confidential personal information, that's all good. So she basically confronts the person and tells them about this blithe person online who maybe it's them, maybe it's not, but creates a situation where this person is obviously extremely uncomfortable and feeling like they are being hunted down for leaving a negative review, which is not a situation that anyone should ever at any point be put in. She calls up the person again for a second time to basically try and confront them again and tell them that she knows that they are this person that left them a mean review online. I know it was you, Fredo. You broke my heart. She makes the person cry, which is, you know, that's pretty much where the story ends. <sighs> Look, all jokes aside, what we've just read through there, and keep in mind what we've read through there in the words of Kathleen Hale, so it could be a lot worse than that. I imagine there's at least some form of bias from someone who is so obviously completely self-absorbed. What really transpired could have been worse. I, I'm not too sure. But that's the information we have. And even in her words, that is stalking. That's not light stalking. That's not some fun little game. That is genuine hunting down of someone because they hurt your feelings. And that's... It's scary. I'm not sure if there's any truth to it, but apparently the Blythe person stopped their uh, reviewing and blogging after that. I know personally from speaking to people and on videos I've done in the past that there are a lot of people who are scared now to leave negative reviews because of this instance because they are scared that they'll get tracked down by the author. I'm sure Kathleen Hale is not the first person to do something crazy like this but ultimately it's created a situation where people are now scared to leave reviews because everyone thinks they're going to get stalked. And that brings us to now and the book Kathleen Hale is a Crazy Stalker. The title itself, I think, is extremely inappropriate because it's it's making a joke out of some genuine criticism about Kathleen Hale, and that's her style, to d downplay and discredit any criticism she ever gets. It's her trying to take ownership of people telling her that she's a stalker and throwing in the word crazy just to really try and make it seem like they're being hyperbolic. But I want it to be known that I'm saying this with absolutely no theatrics or drama or exaggeration. I do think Kathleen Hale is a stalker. I'm not going to say crazy because I don't, I don't know her. I don't know her state of mind, but I know the actions she has taken and the choices she has made because she told us. <laughs> and what she did was wrong and sick and constitutes stalking. Sure. I think it's disgusting that there's going to be a book released under the selling point of her stalking someone. And I mean, it's not by HarperCollins anymore, which is interesting. Oh, that's what uh, I wanted to mention. Apparently, her mother-in-law was one of the big, big uh, executives at HarperCollins before her first book was published there. So take that information and do with it what you will. 
It's interesting. But she's now putting this new book out through an independent press called Grove, and they have said, We stand by our publication. There are six essays in this collection, and we've been revised and expanded since online publication, including the essay Catfish. It wasn't catfishing. We would encourage people to read the collection before passing judgment. Look, normally I'm like, yes, read the book before you make uh, judgment calls about it. But the judgment calls in this instance aren't about the content of the book. It is about, it's about the book being sold on genuine actions taken by the author. She used her connections and her contacts to get confidential and personal information about someone that she had no right to. She used that information in a way that she was not given permission to by the people who gave her that information to locate and visit the home the residence, the dwelling of someone who did not want to see her. And the thing, the one thing that made me decide to do this video and to drag up her past, that's something I normally hate doing, but I decided I'm going to do it this time, is because of this. In the synopsis for this book, in the description of the book, it refers back to the person who she stalked, refers to them again as a catfish. I'm going to read out what it says so you can see how sick this is. In Catfish, she recounts a standoff with a caustic Goodreads reviewer who writes under an alias, spurring hail on a treacherous Instagram investigation that ends badly at the reviewer's house. It makes the reviewer, who may have written a mean review at most, into some kind of villain who wears a mask and has a secret identity for doing bad things. When that's not the case, they were just one of the many millions and millions of people on the internet who wanted some anonymity. And I mean, it's a bit weird creating a whole identity around that anonymity, but if that's their method, sure. That identity wasn't created with the direct intent of deceiving you, Kathleen. So wow, yeah, this is probably going to be one of the longest videos I've ever done, but I hope that was a fun refresher course, a crash course through the history of Kathleen Hale's stalking. Like I said, I'm not trying to cancel her. I'm not trying to boycott. I don't really do cancel culture. But I would hope that everyone who even considers buying this new book is aware that at least one of these essays is based on something very real that she did, something very wrong, something that should absolutely not be turned into a profit for her. This is my one of my main issues with it is that she's selling this. She's profiting off of something that I'm pretty sure was a crime, something that... Um, genuinely terrified someone, something that just shouldn't have happened. That's all. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm doing some actual book videos soon, like some book reviews, that kind of stuff. I have got a pretty interesting book review coming up, which I'm hoping will be my very next video. See you in the next video. Catch ya.